Hello, Starman.netters. I'm the Undisclosed. Well, that's my YouTube name, but on here, you probably know me as Van Caddix. Why the two different names? It sounded like a good idea at the time. Here, we're playing a game that all you should be familiar with. Earthbound, the war against Gygus. A game made by famous copyright Shigesato Atoy. Well, yeah, the scenario created by him. And by Ape Industries, or is it? Wait a minute, these do not look like Ness, Paul, and Jeff. These look like different characters. Oh, this is the PK Hack John Bound. By Blue and Toy. Now I get what I'm playing. So let's start this puppy up. Um, that, and play Genius because that's basically the easy for you because fast is basically easy mode because of how the game works. And I have a stereo system and I like the default gray. So here we're just going to use the default names here. All four sounds pretty reasonable here. And we'll try to name our dogs, Buster and Casey. So let's try naming him Buster. And wait a minute. Oh yeah, that's right. Five, six letter cap. Can't do that. I guess I'll do, do use the fold as well. Dogs. Creative enough. And what I like to eat, which should be what does John like to eat? And look, apparently John likes to have fudge. So I'll continue on. And what's your ultimate power? Okay, I refuse to have John. John used flatulence as attack, so we're going to make something different here. In the spirit of um, playing hacked, hacked Earthbound games, I hereby declare his ultimate power. PK. Hack. Not canon, but who cares. And, yep, and uh, I see that this is good. Two thousand two minus nineteen ninety X years after the events of Earthbound. We go to Arvada, a small city in Colorado. A real city, by the way. And here, history begins to repeat itself. And apparently John likes to sleep in glasses. I wear glasses. I find it difficult to sleep in them. And apparently, John likes to investigate things while he's, he, while he's still in his bed clothes. I don't know why. He's just a clerk that he has. And apparently, John's not a silent protagonist. So yeah, apparently the small city of Arvada is going to become the next Roswell because a U apparently a UFO has crashed. Well, I'll have to say it to believe it. I thought it was a meteorite that crashed. And here we meet our picky Ernsat. 
Mr. Guy. But we don't care about crew fruit now, do we? And apparently, this world's a little bit drearier than the one you've seen in the Mother Earthbound Grey games because boxes lying on the floors do not have birthday wrapping on them. But it does contain a tasty sticky bun. And where we find the Mirror counterpart of Ness, Evil Ness, who happens to be lives in a house that has crashed next to the UFO. <laughs> and seeing a lot of alien activity lately. Oh, so it really is a UFO, not a meteorite. My bad. Actually, that could be a quite accurate description. I, th I think he might have would have gotten put in jail for the night for that statement, but who knows? Supposedly, we have the freedom of speech, but that might have been infringing on other people's rights. I don't know, I'm not that much of an expert of the law. And if we go to back to bed, and then we, at midnight, we have a knock at the door. Why? Because I played the pre, because I played Earthbound, and this is, and history repeats itself. Yeah, who would be up at least this, this night? Except Porky, but I think he lives in on it. I might be wrong here. Oh, it's Baron Hon von Heimlich. Who's supposed to be the Porky Urnsat? I don't know, let's see. Hint, yes he is. So apparently he wants us to check out the UFO. Probably a good idea since um, in the real world it probably would have been under classifications, Red taped it all up, and but we'll see. And because they have to deal with the with the with someone who calls himself the Ku Klux Klan. Okay, okay. Either they they have a fascination with fecal matter, or you know what? I'll leave you with the unfortunate implications. Oh yeah, did I get, did I already clip it? 
Oh, I already cut the pie tin. Apparently, John likes to use frisbee-type weapons instead of the traditional bats that most striped shirt protagonists like to use. Yeah, the sticks and... Sh well, at least I got something that was actually worthwhile rather than the cookie. could that be? Oh, it's Sean's dad. Who has to work a lot of overtime this month. And you'll probably not see him the entire game because that's how Ness's dad was. See? John and Ness have this sort of connection that history repeats itself. I don't know why that is. Well, unfortunately, um, he... his dad is only behind him 0.1 less percent than Ness's dad is. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be an indication or whatever, but you make make of it what you will. Okay, let's start our adventure. And we already have a buck at our door. That's nice. It's the tomato hornworm. <laughs> So let's just do a, a bit of you hit me, I hit you, since really the, the odometer type HP really isn't that effective until later on. But we already spired it, so we're doing well. And here we have the crazed... Yep, the crazed catnip. This should probably be like that um, pro enemy that you would usually fight in the Earthbound games. Oh, another smash. These guys are getting critical like crazy. And John's already level 2. And is able to get life up, or as he calls it, vitalize. Now would now be a good time to. Hmm, well, we have plenty of magic. Let's go ahead and vitalize now. Yeah. And here we fight another crazed catnip. Can, and now John cannot use magic, but at this point, it's not really that much of an issue. And, and, and like Porky, Baron does not do anything but sets behind and watches us fight. Have a police officer. Well, I guess they're trying to guard that thing. Someone who calls himself the irate copper, and they're out to get our blood. So, only one thing to do: move on. There seems to be a theme here that the cops in this game are a lot more irate <laughs> than the um, cops in the Earth or the Earthbound and Mother games. Well, considering that John likes to call him fascist and all, can you blame them? Well, at least they're no cowards. They're just gluttons. Picky XP, Mr. Guy joins us once again. Oh, for the first time, actually.
And here the UFO opens up and reveals a um Oh, they actually did take out the buzzing sound. I am Tomato, the fa the famous Mother 3 translator and Funimation's translator later if my sources are correct. Here to warn us that humanity is in great danger. And life form being created is, is it is like I mean nemesis. So so apparently ne guy I mean nemesis um, was used to, as some sort of sort of way to absorb human darkness, but then it backfired on them. So so apparently four chosen ones has to stop it. No way! <laughs> yep, and looks like history repeats itself as four people once again set out to save the world, this time in actual America rather than Eagle Land. John has a point. And here we encounter a Starman, who's actually a security guard that wants to parade Mr. Tomato here, or Tomato. Except he's not a Starman, but a Japanese rent-a-cop. Okay, Scott, let's continue. On. Yeah, this might take a while depending on what he does. <laughs> well, Tomato is a PK hacker after all, except that he hacks was the one <laughs> Mr. Trident. <laughs> okay. Oh, nice choice of music here. Makes things a lot more hilarious than what <laughs> the original was. Well, the original situation was. Your definition on hilarity might differ. Well, this situation makes it a lot more hilarious. Instead of the whole... Oh my god, there's a Storman out to kill us. It's, oh my god, there's a um, Japanese rent -a cop out to get Tomato. And he's defeated. And John levels up again. A long story. So instead of trying to kill John and stop the plan of to stop him from saving the world, all he wanted to do was go back in time to get Tomato because he got him fired. I guess that's a legitimate excuse to use a time machine. So here... We enter Baron von Heimlich's house and we'll see what's next.